A Symphony of Wales by Steve Schutch. From the earliest time she could remember, Galashka had heard music from the Wales. During the long, dark winters, blizzards sometimes lasted for days. Then her family stayed indoors, close to the small fire. Galashka heard the songs calling to her out of the darkness beyond even the voice of the wind. The sea gave life to Galushka's village. The seals gave meat and warm furs to protect against the winter cold. In summer, the people caught salmon and other fish, then salted them to keep for the hard times to come. And from whales, they made waterproof skins for their parkas and boots and oil for their lamps in the long winter darkness. One year, the snows came early. For three days, a blizzard bore down on the village. When it finally stopped, Galushka's family needed supplies from the next village. Galashka asked if she might help drive the sled dogs. It is not so easy to drive the sled, her parents said. The dogs will know if you are uncertain of the way. But you will know the way home. Perhaps on the way back you may try. Now go to sleep. The morning was clear and cold as the family set out. The next day the dogs made good time to the neighbouring village. Before starting back, Galashka's parents packed the supplies into the sled. Galushka checked the dog's feet for cuts. She rubbed their ears and necks. Galushka's parents gave her the reins. We'll follow behind you. If your heart and words are clear, the dogs will listen and take you where you wish to go. They set off. Across the ice, snow swelled as the wind began to pick up. Suddenly, the sled dogs broke from the trail, yelping and twitching their ears. What is it? Galushka's parents shouted. I think they hear something, Galushka called back. The sled dogs pulled harder. Their keen ears could pick up high-pitched noises that most humans couldn't hear. But Galashka, if she turned just right, could make out the eerie moans and whistles that grew louder until even her parents could hear them. The dogs stopped short. They were right at the edge of a great bay of open water surrounded on all sides by ice and snow. Everywhere Galashka looked, the water seemed to be heaving and boiling, choked with white whales. Her father came up behind her. Beluga whales, he said softly. Galashka scared, stared. There must be more than a thousand of them. The cries of the whales rose and fell on the wind. As they swam slowly about, the dogs whined and poured anxiously at the ice. Let's hurry to the village, cried Galashka. We'll get help there. Galashka's father, though, knew there was no help. They must have been trapped when they came here last fall looking for food, he said quietly. There's nothing we can do to free them. When the last of the water freezes over, the whales will die. But Galashka's mother remembered that an icebreaker several winters ago had rescued a Russian freighter trapped in the sea ice. Could we call on the emergency radio? Maybe an icebreaker can clear a channel for the whales, she said. Galashka and her parents raced back to their village. They gathered everyone together and told them what had happened. Galushka's father got on the emergency radio and put out a distress call. Beluga whales, maybe thousands of them trapped. We need an icebreaker. Can anyone hear me? Far out at sea, a great Russian icebreaker named the Moskva picked up the faint signal. We read you, the captain radioed back. We're on our way, but it may take us several weeks to reach you. Can you keep the whales alive until then? Some of the people from Galushka's village started setting up a base camp near the whales. Others set out by dog sled to alert the surrounding set settlements. Everyone came, young and old, parents, grandparents and children. Day after day they chipped back the edges of the ice, trying to make more room for the whales to come up to breathe. Look, said Galushka's grandmother, see how the whales are taking turns, how they give the younger ones extra time for air? As Galashka took her turn chipping back the ice, the song of Nana filled her ears again. She sang to the whales while she worked, trying to let them know help was on the way. Each day Galashka looked anxiously for a ship, but each day a little more water turned to ice. Each day the whales got weaker from hunger. Galashka knew how it felt to be hungry. The year before, her village had caught barely enough fish to make it through to spring. Sometimes the memory still gnawed at her. Even so, she gave the whales part of the fish from her lunch. The other villagers noticed and began to feed some of their own winter fish to the whales too. 
One morning, Galoshka awoke to the sounds of exciting, excited voices and barking dogs. The icebreaker had broken through the main channel during the night. Hurry, Galoshka, her parents called. Galoshka pulled on her boots and parka and ran down the path to the water. Everyone was gathered. Off to one side, the old ones stood watching. They beckoned Galoshka to join them. Now, they said, let us see what the whales will do. The whales crowded together in fear, keeping as far from the icebreaker as possible. On board the ship, the captain gave orders. He hoped the whales would see the pathway cleared through the ice and follow the ship to safety. The icebreaker slowly turned around and faced back out to sea. But the whales wouldn't follow the ship. They may be afraid of the noise of our engines, the captain radioed to shore. I've heard that trapped whales will sometimes follow the singing of other whales. We'll try playing a recording of whale songs. Then the songs of the whales echoed over the water, deep moans and high whistling calls, ancient sounds from another world. But the whales would not go near the ship. Again and again, the captain inched the giant icebreaker closer to the whales, then back towards the sea. But the whales stayed as far away as they could. It's no use, the captain radioed in despair, and we can't stay beyond tomorrow. Already the channel is starting to refreeze. Galashka was near tears as she asked the old ones what could be done now. Wait, they said, let us see what tomorrow brings. The old ones of the village thought carefully. Long is the time, but once it is said, humans and whales made music together. Perhaps the time has come again. Let us speak with the captain. Quickly, Galashka and the old ones radioed the ship. Have you any other music, people music, to play for the whales, they asked. The captain said he would see what his crew could find. First, they tried playing rock and roll. The electric guitars and drums boomed, but the whales would not follow the ship. Next, the crew tried Russian folk music. It was softer with many voices singing together. The whales swam a little closer, but still they would not follow the ship. On shore, Galashka ran back to the radio transmitter. She had to talk with the captain. I know there's other music that will work. Please keep trying, she told him. The crew found some classical music. First, the sweet sounds of violins and violas. Next, the deeper notes of the cellos. And deepest of all, the string basses. And way up high, a solo violin. And everyone fell silent as the melody carried over the water. The whales grew quiet too, listening. A few whales started to sing back to the ship and to each other. Gradually, more whales joined in. Then they began to swim towards the ship. Cautiously, the captain started the huge engines and headed slowly out to sea. One whale followed, then another, then a few more. Soon, all the whales were following the ship through the narrow channel, past the broken chunks of ice, back to the safety of the open ocean. On shore, people laughed and cried and hugged each other. The sled dogs jumped up and barked, trying to lick the noses and faces of anyone they could reach. Galashka buried her wet face in the fur of the dogs' necks. Such good, good dogs, she told them over and over. Such good dogs. Now the whales are going home. On board the ship, the captain and his crew raised every flag. The music played as the captain radioed to save the whales were safe. He and his crew were finally going home too. Galoshka and her family looked out to sea. They waved to the icebreaker and the disappearing whales. And do you hear whales singing now? Her grandmother asked. Yes, Galoshka said, but it isn't just some I hear now. It's something bigger than that. Something like a whole symphony of whales. Historical notes. This tale was inspired by a true story. In the winter of 1984 to 1985, nearly 3,000 beluga whales were found trapped in the Senyavina Strait of Siberia, a narrow body of water across the Bedding Strait from Alaska. With the bitter cold, the water was freezing rapidly. In places, the sea ice was 12 feet thick. For seven weeks, the people of the Chukchi Peninsula and the crew of the icebreaker Moskva risked their lives to save those whales. Against all odds, they succeeded. There are several other recorded instances of rescuers leading trapped whales to safety by playing whale music. But to my knowledge, the Chukchi rescue was the first time whales ever followed an icebreaker playing classical music. Was it Beethoven or Mozart or Tchaikovsky? 
the Soviet newspaper accounts don't say that part of the story is still untold. Wow, what an amazing story. We hope you enjoyed this story. See you next time.